Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video, the only game that people care about apparently. And today I'm bringing you guys some sets designed specifically to counter each Arc Tempered Monster, which are going to be coming which are going to be coming this weekend as part of the anniversary festival, the appreciation festival event. It's going to bring back all the Arc Tempered Monster quests. You can do any of them at any time. So I figured I would bring you guys some sets to help you in that quest. <laughs> Before I get into the actual sets, I want to quickly mention uh, and go over a few things. The first being that for these sets, I will be using Gamma, aka Arc Tempered Monster Gear, but I've made sure not to use any Gamma armor of the monster you'll be fighting, which means you won't see any Gamma Xeno pieces in a anti AT Xeno set obviously. But since they're meant to be optimal and endgame sets, you will still need some Gamma pieces. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is Elder Seal. A lot of people have talked to me about Elder Seal and have recommended Elder Seal weapons for fighting the AT Elders. However, after some testing and research, I really don't think that it helps all that much in most cases. Of course, there are some cases where it does come in very, very handy. But uh, I'm not going to recommend Elder Seal as a end-all, be-all or say that it's some sort of super strat. It works, of course, but by no means is it the most optimal way to fight every single Arc Tempered monster, nor is it required. So, just wanted to put that out there. Another thing I wanted to talk about is health boost. Having 200 health is very attractive, is something that feels really good to have in your set, but in my honest opinion, isn't a requirement? However, the way that I've set up all of these sets allows for you to replace some minor skills with some vitality jewels or just replace a charm so that if you really value having maxed out health, you can have it in any of these sets. Thirdly, recently I was running out of space on both my PC and my PS4. So about a few weeks ago I was deleting a bunch of stuff. Um, and that also included some spare and random clips and footage that I had of some of my runs versus Arc Tempered Monsters. So I don't actually have any footage of me fighting Arc Tempered Monsters to play for you guys in the background. So all the gameplay you guys are going to be seeing in this video will be against the regular Tempered versions, except for Xeno and Zora, since they don't have a non-Arc tempered version. So I just wanted to clarify that before anyone, you know, Captain God Hunter Xtreme 69 points that out in the comments. Not putting AT gameplay because I don't actually have any of my own gameplay here on hand. And my final point, speaking of Zora that I mentioned a little bit ago, uh, I won't be showing a anti AT Zora set because you can use literally whatever you like as long as it has high raw and fortify probably so not gonna really be going over any specific set i personally used a spread heavy bowgun a lot of people are using that so i guess that's my recommendation right there all right now let's get into the actual sets first up we have the og arc tempered monster the first one that came out Karen. So for Karen, we're going to be using a bow because bows are very balanced and not overpowered in any way, shape, or form at all. For this, we're going to be using the Anjanath bow with three affinity augments, and the rest of the skills are standard crit element skills. If you watch my anti arc tempered great Jagras video, which in my opinion is going to be the pinnacle of the end game in Monster Hunter World, this is a very similar set. The only difference being that this set has level three slugger in here, so you can knock out the Karen much faster and much more often. But if you want a safer set you can just replace the blaze jewels for vitality jewels or take a thunderproof mantle instead of an impact mantle or you could just swap out the charm for a vitality charm instead and your game plan is very simple shoot the head a lot and then it dies moving on to the second at bibi is valhazak this one is kind of the exception to some of the things i mentioned early on in this video because you do benefit a lot from using elder seal and vitality boost versus him so so for him we're going to be using the devastation's thorns the nerd gigante charge blade this is kind of a throwback to one of one of my most popular videos actually the hada solo arc tempered valhazak so i'm still kind of using the same set there wasn't really anything wrong with this one you could get pretty easy solo kills in in relatively fast times. Of course, this is now a updated version of that set, so I'm still using the Devastation's Thorns for the same reasons. It has High Elder Seal, it has Dragon Damage, and it has Impact Files, which is something that none of the other Dragon Element Charge Blades have, but if you don't want to use it, you can just use the Kiar Strongarm King, I believe, the Kiar Fire Element Charge Blade, or you could use the Decay, which also has Dragon Damage. But me personally, I'm just gonna stick to Old Reliable, 
but those are also very, very viable options as well. I have mine augmented for a health region augment, which is pretty much mandatory with any weapon that you plan to take on Arc Tempered Valhazak with, and I have mine slotted with an Iron Wall Jewel. The helmet is the Dragon King Eye Patch, slotted with a Magazine Jewel. The chest is the Damascus Male Beta, slotted with three Artillery Jewels, and the Gauntlets, Coil, and Legs are the Zenajiva Gamma Pieces, slotted with a total of three Miasma Jewels, a Tenderizer Jewel, a Shield Jewel, a Dragon Jewel, a Mighty Jewel, and a Charger Jewel. As a whole, this would give you maxed out health boost, weakness exploit, focus, artillery, and effluvia resist, two levels of crit boost, one level of dragon attack and power prolonger, capacity boost, a spare level of special ammo boost, one level of guard and maximum might, and guard up, as well as the Zenajiva set bonus Razor Sharp. So with the impact files, you'll be able to stun him a lot more often, and the rest of the skills are pretty much focused around beefing you up and not getting ticked down too aggressively, and just standard charge blade skills pretty much, nothing too crazy here. So moving on to the next Arc Tempered monster, is Lunastra. For this one, we're going to be using the new Kiar Ice Charge Blade, and this is pretty much the same as the set that I used in one of my old videos. I'll leave a card for that video on the right-hand side of the screen. The only difference in this set is that I have three levels of Windproof, which is something that I got from watching a X's speedrun versus Luna. So I'll leave a link to his video where I got the idea for this set in the description, even though, <laughs> I mean, if you know anything about Monster Hunter World or Charge Blade, you probably already know who he is, but still, his link will be in the description. But anyway, this set gives you maxed out ice attack and a decent amount of crit, however we can't fit weakness exploit into the set, so having a level of maximum might does benefit you more than just one level of weakness exploit, because Luna's head doesn't actually count as a weak point for the charge blade. If you prefer something else, then you can just use this ice bow set that I featured on my top 5 KT video. Speaking of bows, we have another bow set, this time for Arc Tempered Teostra. For this set, we're going to be using the Terrath Arrow Water, I have mine augmented for an affinity increase and slotted with a mighty bow jewel. For the helm, we're going to be using the Wrath Soul Helm Beta, slotted with two stream jewels. The chest is the Kirin Jacket Gamma, slotted with two more stream jewels. The gauntlets are the Kirin Long Arms Gamma, slotted with two tenderizer jewels. The coil is the Kulturoth Malice Gamma, slotted with a force shot jewel. The boots are the Azure Star Lord Guards, slotted with a spread jewel. And the charm is the KO Charm 3. As a whole, this will give you four levels of water attack, maxed out free element, critical boost, weakness exploit, and slugger, one spare level of blight resist, normal shots, spread shots, bow charge plus, as well as the Rathalo set bonus critical element. The only problem with this bow is that it unfortunately does not have power coding, so here's to hoping Capcom makes that data mined power code jewel a real thing, am I right? Anyway, it doesn't matter too much since this thing has an insane amount of elemental damage. It has over 500 water damage. It actually has the same amount of elemental damage that the Anjanath bow has. Unfortunately, you do have to spec into free element to free that up, but it is pretty worth it. And if you use close range coatings and manage to play around him relatively closely, you'll still be able to clap the shit out of him, so... Moving on to the totally not annoying Arc Tempered Kushala. For him, we can just use a standard endgame longsword DPS set. For this, we're going to be using the Reaver Calamity, which is the final version of the Devil Joe longsword. I have mine augmented for an affinity increase and a health regen augment, but if you're good enough, you can opt for an attack increase instead of the health regen. For the armor, we're going to be using the Nergigante Helm Beta, slotted with an expert jewel and an attack jewel. And for the rest of the armor, we're going to use Draken Gear, slotted with a total of one mighty jewel, one critical jewel, and three tenderizer jewels. I only really recommend using this set if you're really confident in your longsword play. If you do manage to outmaneuver him early on in the fight, you can pretty much stagger him until he dies. Just make sure all of your hits, and I mean all of your hits, land on his head. If not, and the fight drags on a bit longer, and you need some wind pressure negation, we're gonna have to use some funky sets for this one. This set in particular uses his basic gear, so this is non-tempered Kushala gear, and as such, unfortunately, it has four levels wasted on ice attack, but it does have full wind pressure negation, so it should make the fight a lot more comfortable, a lot easier to manage. And once you do beat him at least once, you should go ahead and build his Gamma Coil and use this set instead. This set doesn't have any wasted skills, and it has a bit more DPS, so it should make subsequent fights a whole lot easier for you. And lastly, the last Arc Tempered monster we'll cover is going to be Arc Tempered Xeno. For this, we're once again going to be using the Devil Joe Longsword, however, this time the health region is kind of mandatory. This is actually the same DPS set that we use for Kushala, and the same kind of thing applies 
applies here, your objective is to survive until you're able to perma stagger him with Helm Splitter. So I only really recommend that you take this if you're really confident in your longsword skills and you're able to avoid all the fire puddles or at least keep enough pressure and attacks on him that you, your life seal can just face tank the whole thing and basically stun lock him for the rest of the fight until he dies. If you're able to do that, use this set. But if you're not so confident that you can do that or you just prefer a bit more survivability, you know, just in case, you swap out the helmet for the Kushala Gamma Helmet and the charm for the health charm, which will lower your crit by a bit, but you'll have level 3 health boost. And if you want to go even more defensive than that, just swap out the charm for the Clear Mind Charm, which will give you Heat Guard, which makes you completely ignore all of the damage from the fire puddles, and swap out the helmet for the Kulturoth Gamma Helmet, which you can either slot for health boost 3 or one level of handicraft and health boost 2. All up to you. Well guys, those are my sets. Best of luck fighting them this weekend. Let me know if you guys would like to see an anti-arc tempered Kulturoth set. I didn't include her in this video for more or less the same reasons that uh, I didn't include Zora, is that there are a lot of different viable sets, and I have made videos in the past regarding this. Obviously, they require some updating, but I would like to know if you guys would like to see those updated builds rather than put them on here, because I haven't made videos for all of the other Arc Tempered monsters. So let me know if you guys want to see that, or if you even would like to see uh, the sets for Extreme Behemoth, which I also haven't made a video on. And if you guys like what I do and would like to support me so I can make more videos and make them more often, check out my Patreon. There's a bunch of benefits if you pledge, including patronize only calendar with details and dates on all the videos that I plan to post for that month, as well as vote priority on those videos and video suggestions. I started a new semester of college today, so my time for making videos is going to be greatly reduced, but you guys can help me by pledging. So the link to my page is in the description. You can see all the details there, as well as my Discord. And a huge, huge shout out to Muhammad Alamudi for being my first patron. He's a really cool guy, so thank you very much, my guy. And that about wraps up this video, boys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So until then, take care.